Hey everybody, Movie Man here. Happy summer. I hope it's off to a fun and relaxing start for you. Um, today I want to talk about one of my favorite genre, sub-genres of films, biker films. Um, and one of my favorite ones in particular is Hell's Bells. Released in 1969, directed by Maury Dexter, and starring two stalwarts of biker films, Adam Mork and Jeremy Slate. More on them in a second. Now, the biker film genre um, burned brightly and then flamed out rather quickly in a six, about a six-year period from 1966 to 1972. Uh, it was kicked off by Roger Corman, the king of exploitation films, uh, who knew his audience, uh, knew what was going on in the world, and said, let's make a movie about it. He did things like The Trip, um, you know, when the drug craze was really kicking up, and when the Hells Angels in the early 60s became very prominent, uh, especially with Hunter S. Thompson's book, Roger Corman said, uh, there's some money in that, let's make a movie. And so he made The Wild Angels in 1966 with Peter Fonda and Nancy Sinatra. And it was a big hit with young audiences. And sure enough, within a matter of months, a lot of independent producers were going, oh, let's get in on this. And so you had a whole slew of biker films being rushed into production. Most of these, let's be honest, all of these were made very cheaply um, with a sort of mixture of stars up and coming like Jack Nicholson and Bruce Dern and stars maybe on the wane. You know, Cameron Mitchell was in a couple of these. Uh, Jack Mahoney, Joel McRae, so, uh, or Jordy McRae, I should say. So, it, you know, they grabbed whoever they can grab for these movies, made them on the cheap. Plot lines were rather thin, uh, in some ways almost non existent. One thing the biker movies did do was use plot lines from westerns, um, to try to, you know, to use as their plot lines. And Hell's Bells uses the plot line from the James Stewart film Winchester 73 as its basis. Uh, in Winchester 73, the prize possession is a rifle. In Hell's Bells, the prize possession is naturally a motorcycle. Now, in a subgenre like this, it does create its own stars, um, or it creates its, you know, I don't want to say leading men, but uh, maybe stars is a little too, I don't know rich of a term, it creates its well-known actors. And two of the ones who really made a name for themselves in these films are Jeremy Slate and Adam Rourke, who are the two leads in this film. Now, I happen to be an Adam Rourke fan. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say it. I think he's a fun actor. He gives it all he's got. Uh, usually he plays the, the leader of the gang in these movies like he does in this one. Uh, he, of course, was Buddy in Hell's Angels on Wheels. And he was Kissam in my, partic my own particular favorite biker film, The Savage Seven. In Hell's Bells, he plays Tampa, the leader of the gang. Jeremy Slate uh, had a rather interesting biker film career. He would play the heavy, um, and he would also sort of play the hero. Uh, he was particularly a rather nasty villain in uh, Born Losers, which introduced us to the character of Billy Jack. Uh, in Hell's Bells, he plays Dan, who um, I guess you can call him the hero, the good guy of the movie. Uh, he's not an ex-biker who's being hunted by his old gang. He's not, he's not a lawbreaker. He um, actually is a decent guy. So anyway, the plot line of this, like I said, comes from Winchester 73. Um, in the beginning of the film, we see Dan in a bike race um, where he sort of outduels another biker named Tony, who is rather kind of a ruthless, vicious, well, I don't want to say vicious, but uh, sort of a ruthless guy. He tries to cheat Dan. He tries to, you know, knock him off his bike. But Dan prevails and wins the grand prize, which is a beautiful motorcycle. Tony, of course, is not happy about this. And he goes to make Dan an offer to buy the bike off of him, which Dan politely declines. Now, Dan's motives for winning the bike are actually very noble. He wants to sell the bike for a top price and use the money to pay off his, his ranch. 
Tony just wants the bike because he wants the bike. One night, Dan is celebrating is uh, at his girlfriend's house celebrating his victory, and as he drives home in his pickup truck with his prized possessions strapped to the in the back, he sees a guy laying in the road. He gets out, and he, as he rolls the guy over, there's Tony taking a rock, clunk, gets Dan right in the head, leaves him, leaves him in the desert, no gas, flat tires with a Gila monster breathing down his neck. But the Gila monster really doesn't do anything. Anyway, Tony takes the bike, goes off to celebrate with some friends, and we are then introduced to Adam Work as Tampa and his gang. Now, Tampa has taken his shine to the bike, which Tony has left outside of a bar while they're inside celebrating. Tampa wants the bike, and whatever Tampa wants, Tampa gets, however he can get it. Now, Tampa's Gang, uh, let's be honest, is not exactly the most threatening group of guys you'll ever see. Uh, they are not the Hells Angels. They are not the Wild Angels or the Devil's Angels or any other rather violent biker gangs we see in these films. They're just, they don't have any particular colors. They don't have a particular name. They're just basically a group of guys. And, um... Let's just say Tampa, although I love Adam Mork, isn't the most um, craziest violent leaders out there. Uh, in fact, he calls his gang a bunch of ninnies. Uh, that's about as harsh as the language gets in this film. Um, so, you know, they're not exactly the most uh, threatening gang. However, they do beat up Tony and his friends take Dan's bike and ride off with it. Dan comes to, eventually gets to the bar, finds Tony, and Tony tells him what happened. Tony apologizes, says, hey man, I'm sorry, I was kind of just out of my head. Um, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, I'm sorry. And Dan, as well as you should, punches him out. So now the rest of the movie is Dan in pursuit of his bicycle and Tampa's gang. Bicycle, sorry, bike and Tampa's gang. Uh, Dan comes upon Tampa's camp, sees his bike, goes to steal it, and unfortunately doesn't make it out of the camp. Now, Tampa is not an unkind biker leader. Even though he won't give Dan back his bike, he will give Dan a consolation prize, which in this case is Kathy, one of the biker mamas, played by Jocelyn Lane. Now, Speaking as a man, Kathy is not the worst consolation prize, but when you really, really want your motorcycle, uh, unfortunately, a woman will not do. So now, Dan, Tampa's gang rides off, leaves Dan with, with Kathy, who is not at all happy about being left behind by her mates. And so, Dan is not happy with being left with Kathy. And so, we have that conflict. Um, as well as Dan's pursuit of Tampa. So the rest of the film is about Dan one by one picking off Tampa's gang. Now Dan doesn't do this um, violently. He doesn't go and intentionally maim or he doesn't kill anybody really, at least not purposely. Um, he does knock a guy off of the bike, guy breaks his shoulder, he breaks another guy's leg. Uh, a couple of them get arrested until uh, it's really down to Tampa and Tampa's really right-hand man, Gippo. Now, Gippo is probably the most brutish of Tampa's gang. Um, he's not very smart. He's kind of uh, just a hulking, dumb lummox. But Gippo is um, dedicated to Tampa and will do anything, including slitting Kathy's throat. Uh, to help Tampa. Dan and Gippo get into a uh, fist fight over um, over Kathy, sort of. Well, Gippo uses Kathy as a shield. Dan gets Kathy away. And Gippo and Dan have a fist fight falling down into a mine in which Gippo beats a rather grisly fate at the hand of a, uh, well, shall we say, the fangs of a rattlesnake. Um, 
soon thereafter, the rest of Tampa's gang decides, hey dude, our lives don't mean, are a little more important than a stupid bike. It's your bike, you fight for it, we're out of here. And the rest, those remaining of Tampa's gang abandon him to face Dan in one final confrontation, which they do. Sort of a jousting competition with chains instead of spears. Now I won't give away who uh, emerges victorious. You could probably guess who, but where Hell's Bells gets kind of interesting and maybe what sets it above some of these other movies is it has a rather twist for an ending. Um, a twist which when I first saw the movie, I didn't expect. Um, it caught me off guard, and quite frankly, it kind of bummed me out. I was like, ooh, I, I didn't see that coming. Uh, so for that alone, it's worth checking out. Uh, the cast, like I said, Jeremy Slate is very good as Dan. Adam Rourke, unfortunately, again, I love the guy. Uh, it is not exactly his most menacing role, um, but, you know, if you're a fan of Adam Rourke, you know, you check it out. Uh, Jocelyn Lane is Kathy. Um, she's kind of fun, feisty, tough. And she's kind of hot, so that doesn't hurt either. Um, the gang members really aren't um, anybody to really of note. Um, except, you know, William Lucking as Gippo. Kind of his uh, hulking presence. Uh, the film was shot on location in Tucson, Arizona. Um, which really helps the movie a lot. Um, you know, the rugged terrain, uh, it's, you know, it's nice to see that instead of some phony sets and things. So that's worth checking out. Um, so in terms of where I would rank this in, in the upper echelon of biker films, it's definitely in the top three. Um, you know, my personal favorite is the Savage Seven, uh, which I'll talk about in another video. Uh, there's also Hell's Angels on Wheels, starring Adam Rourke and, and Jack Nicholson. Um, there are The Devil's Angels with John Cassavetes. Uh, there are The Losers, which is a very hard-to-find biker film, also with Adam Rourke and a few others. There's Hell's Angels 69, which stars Jeremy Slate. Um, and The Real Hell's Angels. That's a hoot to check out if you ever get a chance to check that out. Um, but Hell's Bells is kind of up there, I would say, definitely within the top five. Um, you know, if you're looking for story and character development, there is a little character development here. Um, but in terms of story, if you've seen Winchester 73, you've seen Hell's Bells. Um, but hey, the biker films are fun. they are nothing to be taken seriously. They're cheaply made. They're not always the best acted, best plotted, best scripted. But... Look, if you want some escapism, you can't go wrong with guys on bikes. You can't go wrong with biker mamas. It's worth checking out. So check out Hell's Bells. It's usually released on a twin bill with the Wild Angels. Um, or if you can check it out on its own. It's a fun, enjoyable film. Uh, and, you know, maybe it'll lead you to uh, become interested in the genre as I am. Anyway, this is Movie Man. I hope you enjoyed the film. If you did enjoy it, if you do get a chance to watch the film, drop a comment. Let me know what you think about the ending. Um, let's see if it throws you for a little bit of a what? Like it did me. Anyway, I'll be back soon with some more videos, some more reviews of some films, uh, some monster movies, maybe some biker films, maybe some more serious movies. Uh, hey, it's summertime. I'm on break. So look for more content soon. Thanks for watching and enjoy the movies.